Okay, Dirty Jamie here. Yeah, gotta stroke the beard every time. I always do. Looking at camera, it's like, ooh, that thing's getting bushy. We are working on the 99 Suzuki Bandit 1200. The Bandit S1200. We're changing the clutch. <clears throat> it uh, it slips when you get up around 7 to 9 grand. You run under high power. Um, it hasn't slipped lately because the oil is due. I mean, you're like, oh, the oil shouldn't be wore out that much. No, it does. When it's brand new, shit's slick. And uh, so it slips really bad, right, when you change the oil. As the oil wears out, it slips a little less. I change my oil like every 2,500 on my bikes. And uh, this one was due for an oil change, and I wanted to do the clutch, too. I ordered it a long time ago. I got the gasket. I got the plates, the friction plates. I got the springs. I even got the rebuild parts for the ma the slave cylinder because it's a hydraulic clutch. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. So we already pulled the oil and uh, just letting it drip. I'm probably going to put the plug back in there and swap the filter out in between things. There's the cover for the clutch. And I tried to draw, draw a half-assed picture because these screws are different length. And I'm going to place them around about where they belong. I've made a little a little hole for the sight glass and the cap. Made a little indication for the cap. So we're going to pull all these screws out. I've already got them loose. And then I'm probably going to tap on that sucker with a rubber mallet. Just to kind of break the seal. And we'll see how that goes. A few light caps and it came right off with the greatest of ease. Uh, half the gasket stayed behind. No biggie. We'll clean it off of there little by little if we have to. Uh, there's a snap ring in here. So i got to get my snap ring pliers. Pull that sucker together. I'll try to get a video of it if most people know what to do here. It was a two-handed operation, but, you know, it was in there. Squeeze this sucker to make it smaller. Pull it out. You had to squeeze it pretty much the whole way. It was, uh, it was tight getting in there. And then... This dude, if I can get it with my hand. Well, there we go. Take that out. Now we got all kinds of fun stuff. So there's a washer on here. Don't lose track of that. That's what pushes on that throw out bearing, I'd say. And I did not get a new one of these. <clears throat> I kind of wish I would have. Well, uh, short pause here. Uh, at this point, that bearing seems to be in good shape. Um, I wish I would have gotten one, but we're going to put it back together anyway. It, it keeps a lot of oil on it. It's not like a throw-out bearing on a car that gets greased and dried out and... And, uh, yeah, anyway, there's a big nut in here. And you can see it's been peened into that keyway. So we're going to have to get a chisel to push that out, spin it off of there, find the right socket. Then we're going to put a bar in the rear wheel and put it in, in gear. Maybe, I'm thinking high gear might be best. Pretty sure and uh spin that nut out of there all right that last part took a little while we we got a chisel on the nut to kind of push back where they had beaten it in that little notch and then we got a board to fit in the wheel we put it in high gear now keep in mind your clutch doesn't work anymore because you've taken off the throw out bearing and whatnot so i just kind of rocked it back and forth to get it in gear uh didn't have a metric socket inch and three sixteenths worked good on a I have a big old three-quarter drive ratchet. We don't mess with small tools in Dirty Jamie's shop. And uh, now I'm going to get a little pick, pull that washer out of there, and let you know what's going on after that. I kind of thought this thing might just slide right out, but I see some Phillips screws in there. I'll do some investigating and get back with you. All right, that went way easier than I expected. I did rock the bike back just to get the pressure off of the board. It's loose now. And uh, I just reached in there with my hands and pulled the damn thing out. You know, I had to put a little bit of pressure on it, but it came out pretty easy. 
And then you got this basket here, and you can, if I get my fingers on it, it lifts right out. And there's all your plates. Now, before I do this, I got to go get my new plates and get them soaking in some oil because you don't want to put plates in dry. Uh, so we'll get that going, and then we'll start taking these apart, and we'll do some measuring too. I want to see the difference of a worn out one compared to a new one. So we got the clutch plates. I was going to throw this frying pan away anyway. And the engine oil. And uh, you can, I don't know if the bubbles have anything to do with it. I doubt it. But I've been told, and it makes sense, get them soaking before you put them in there. I'll probably soak them an hour or two. Shit, I might let them soak all night and put it together tomorrow. <clears throat> I want to go get a, a digital caliper. I had one. I left it out in the rain. It got ruined. I'm going to run to Harbor Freight and get one of those. You guys know how I love Harbor Freight. And then uh, I want to check the old plates compared to the new plates. And then maybe tomorrow, maybe even tonight, I'll take that basket apart and uh, see the difference in the wear. There's one plate in here, actually. It reminds me. Look at how thin this one is. See how wide this one is and how narrow this one is? I don't know if that's right. But when I take the basket apart, I'll see if there's another narrow one in there. If there's not, then I'm probably... I might even put one of the old plates in just because I don't want to put in a piece of shit, little narrow one that's going to wear out really fast. Anyway, we'll get back to you in a bit. Okay, so I've gone a long way since the last video. <clears throat> this was... This was on top of there. Oops. Yeah, that's right. There we go. And it fits in those grooves. Then there was this piece down inside of there, screwed in with three tiny screws right there. And uh, anyway, we took that apart. We took all the clutch plates out, the steels and the fibers. And I did find one fiber that was smaller on the bottom because it rides on that lip there. So that is correct. We're going to go ahead and put that small one on first. Here's all our new ones soaking in oil. We're just going to take, take them off, uh, you know, not going to scrub on them, but kind of get them so that they don't leak oil all over the place and go fiber steel, fiber steel, fiber steel. The steels actually fit on here really well. Well, you know what I'm saying. You get the teeth to line up and it slides down on there. And then... We will keep the screws loose to slide it in this basket because all the fibers fit in those little notches, as you can see. And then once that's down in there, then we'll tighten up the screws. All right, a couple more steps forward. We put that small fiber plate on first and a steel fiber, steel fiber, all the way up to the top. Put this cap on that actually has teeth on the inside that fits the same pattern as the steels. We put the springs in. These are the these are the old springs. It's a, a cone washer. It's not flat, and there's two of them. Put that underneath of that. We we started the screws, but we didn't tighten them. You know, I didn't want that compressed. And then we put the whole unit inside of this basket and lined up the fibers with these notches just like I showed before and now we're ready to tighten up those screws I'm actually kind of hesitant everything's pretty well solid here there's just a tiny bit of slack but I got to get it back on this shaft kind of thinking maybe I want that slack might not matter but uh, I think I'm going to leave it slack till I get it on there and then tighten the screws after that Okay, there's a part I want to show you. So we slip this in here, and that is your crank shaft gear. That's what turns the basket. That's what hits this big gear on the outside. Up on the top, that's your starter. That is what hits this little gear in the back that's got a severe angle to it. Now, well, and also, there's another gear uh, inside. Pretty sure that drives... And don't I don't even want to sound stupid here, but I think that drives your trans. No, that doesn't drive the transmission. Anyways, you're gonna slip this on there on that shaft onto that bearing, 
and it's going to go through the first set of gears but the second ones might not line up that good you got to really fiddle with it wiggle it push it you're going to want to um you can crank the the wheel around a little bit to help rotate things to get it to line up like it should anyway kind of giving you a blank video nothing to look at there so here i'll go ahead and i'll put this on you got to kind of start it in one side just to get it in the housing and ooh, trying to do it one-handed long video sorry so there i got it started okay there i got in the first gear but i could tell it's not all the way on the second gear so i'm gonna fiddle with probably turning the rear tire to get it to turn and rotate into place unless i could do it by hand but it doesn't seem to be going but i can tell it's not all the way in so don't go tightening your nut on here until all those gears are lined up or you're gonna ruin something all right we got it all the way on so i started the nut and just brought it down with my fingers and i could see it wasn't on all the way i wiggled the rear wheel that didn't help so what i did you can see the starter gear up top i stuck a just pick in there and I just kind of got on the teeth and wiggled it. It was actually engaged pretty well. And then I came down to this bottom gear that we talked about that I wasn't even sure what it was for. And I did the same thing. I got in there with a pick and just wiggled it and then gave it a little push and sure enough it slipped right in. And then I tightened up the nut with my fingers and now I can tell the nuts all the way down where it should be. So now we can torque it down, uh, put well, I'm actually going to change some other parts on the other side, but get our throw-out bearing and our wheel back on, and then the snap ring that we took off in the beginning, and then uh, clean off this cover from some of the stuck gasket. And we're done on this side. We're going to do the uh, slave cylinder on the other side here. I'll probably do that with a separate video. So I'm taking an intermission for tonight. If I had my shit together, if I had done it before... It was really not bad. I think that the other bike was harder, the older XS. This one's way more self-contained, all the basket, the way it fits together. It's easier to line up and everything. Um, the gear was a little tricky, but no big deal. So uh, we still have to torque down the, the transmission shaft nut, and uh, we'll do that in the morning. But I got all the, you know, the plates out of the oil. I drained the oil back into the jug so I can reuse it. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, then we'll work on that slave cylinder for the clutch. I was disappointed that the plates weren't thicker, but I did notice the spring was a little more um, coned. The old spring was more worn out, so it was just a matter of age. It was just heat and use, um, but the plates weren't that worn. I've read somewhere that sometimes people will add a spring that's going to make a significant difference. But I'm pretty confident the little bit of that spring plus the age of those plates, even if it's less than a hundredth of an inch, it could be five thousandths of an inch. You add them all together, ten of them, that's five hundredths of an inch. So uh, my, my uh, caliper doesn't measure that small. Sorry for the long drawn out video. I'm, this one's uh, kind of more in depth than most of my videos. I try to make them shorter. Um, I don't know if there's much more I really need to show you on this. We're just putting it back together now. Uh, I'll try to follow up with a torque spec when I edit the video, and I'll type it in there. And uh, good luck, everybody. Uh, you know, clean off your gasket, put a new gasket on. Um, sometimes I put an RTV on there. A lot of bike guys are going to say don't do that because you don't want to squeeze it into the case and have it contaminate your oil. Very light, light amount. It, it'll be okay not going to kill it. Plus it's rubber. It's not like that rubber is going to eat up the metal in the engine. So yeah. And uh, peace.